Hello everyone, this is the Bovine Terror, and today we will be doing the Empires of the Undergrowth Ant Tier List Part 2, now with Fire Ants. I am very happy to be back to this. Uh, I Since the last time I did this, I have learned a lot more about the ants in this game, how this game works, I've gotten a lot better at the game, and I'm excited to come back and do this, especially with all the new ants that they added from the Fire Ant update, because... Uh, they're all really good, they're all really cool, and they're really, really strong. Starting off with Army Ant Majors. I'm going to be referencing my last tier list quite a bit. I'll have that video linked. If you haven't seen it, might want to go back and watch it just to see what I thought and see how my opinions changed. Um, if not, you can ignore it and just, I am going to be referencing it quite a bit though, so it might get a little confusing if that's the case. So last time, I put Army Ant Majors in S tier, and I put them as the best ant unit in the game. And uh, that opinion has not changed. They are still S tier. In fact, if anything, uh, they have solidified it more in my mind that they are the best ant unit in this whole game. They're the only like support ant species, really. I guess little black ants to some degree. I, I mean, what can I say? They, they buff damage to a shockingly high degree. Uh, I mean, they can give any ant that is on their, that is within their colony, a plus 45 damage boost to their damage not a dps boost a damage boost so if they attack really fast they just it's absurd they're so strong and also i learned from last time i thought it was just army ants that benefit from this so i thought it was just majors and their minors nope it's any ant that is on their side so currently uh, you know if you play like free play or the other foot or something like that the only ants that this benefits are slave makers army ant media army ant majors and trap jaws so there's not a lot of ants that benefit from it right now uh oh and there's another extra level where they're in it i don't remember which extra level it is but there's an extra level where they're there and you can have like leafcutter media i think there's black ants in there as well i don't totally remember um but they're in that level as well and so there's a, only a handful of ants that can benefit from this, but media, the army ant media are one of the best ants to benefit from this because their attack speed is really fast. It's, they already got one of the best ants in the game to benefit from it and they can already boost them. They're just phenomenal. They're amazingly strong. A lot of people I hear say that they're overpriced for what they give you. And like, if you're just looking at their base stats, yeah, they are overpriced. Like... They got good health, but it's not good for their price, you know, and their physical damage resistance is really, really high. It's still not high enough to warrant how expensive they are, and their base damage is pretty bad for how expensive they are. Like, yeah, if you're just looking at their base stats, they're not good. The reason why they're so powerful, though, is because if you just have a few of these in your army, you can suddenly make any ant, including workers, do more DPS than most of the just enemy creatures in this game. And that's every single ant. And it's, it's just absurd. I, I've watched a group of like, I, I've gone into battle arena and watched a group of like seven army ant majors shred a blue skimmer and a bullfrog's health from full to zero in like a few seconds. It's just absurd. They do so much damage. So it doesn't really matter that they're not that tanky because they do so much damage they just annihilate everything. I can see an argument to say that they're not the best ant because they are very expensive and it's pretty difficult to get them going. Like if you were playing free play and you were just playing with like the counterpart colony, um, it takes a while before you can get majors because you need to kind of build up your forces a little bit so they can go collect things so you can't really get the army at majors early on and if you do get them early on you just it takes forever to get anywhere because they're just expensive in that regard yeah they're it's kind of tough but it doesn't matter they're so strong as soon as you get a few of them you're just rolling over everything because nothing can stop them they're so so powerful so that is why they're S. They're unbelievably powerful. I don't have anything else to say. They're just amazing. And then we get on to Army Ant Media. Now, I placed them last time at the bottom of A. When the Fire Ant update came out, I initially was like, I think they might drop to high B. Because Fire Ants are just better than Army Ant Media, and Army Ant Media cost exactly the same as Fire Ants. Um, 
it was kind of disheartening because it felt like I didn't. I was kind of confused why they added fire ants in the game when they're the same price as army ant media and they're just way better. It was kind of weird. As I've started to look into it more, I started to realize they're not. They're still really, really good. And to be honest, I think they're higher in the tier list than I thought initially. It's just that fire ants are ridiculous and they're over the top powerful. What I have been doing, this is a little sneak peek for a future video. I have been mathematically going through and taking every single ant in the game and calculating different statistics for them. Um, calculating out like what their actual DPS is based on how fast bite animations go. Because if you just look at the wiki, you might look at something and say, oh, the attack speed is one, therefore they do one attack a second. That's not true. The actual formula is kind of complicated, but essentially what I found is they attack multiple times a second. The, the precise number is, uh, at least that I could calculate, is 1.67 times a second. I'll go into way more detail about that later on, but basically once I've done that, w once I did that, I started looking at actual stats and saying, like, okay, what is the actual DPS of this ant? And what is the food cost per the DPS of this ant? And what I'm finding is that, yeah, fire ants are, are better, than army ant media they're not that much better army ant media are terrifying and i kind of already mentioned it with the army ant majors but they pair so well with army ant majors because their attack speed is so high and they're really cheap and they're small units you can get a really dense packing of a lot of them next to the army ant majors the army ant majors buff their damage and it's their base damage not their dps they base their they buff their base damage, and then with their high attack speed, it makes that buffed damage just exponentially stronger. They they are absolutely ridiculously strong when paired with army ant majors. They're just good units. They're just solidly good units. They're cheap. They do a lot of damage. You can spam a whole bunch of them, and they're strong. Like, they're just good units. So, I don't think they deserve bottom of A anymore, but I do still think they deserve A, because they're really, really good. They're not as OP as some of the other ants we're going to get into, and I think I'm going to reserve S tier for just unbelievably powerful ants. So, yeah, that's what we're going to go with right now. So, I think they're A tier. Still really, really good ants. One of my favorite ant units in the game, for sure. Ah, <sighs> next. Next. Without a doubt, my favorite ant unit in the game. They're just so much fun. The big-headed ant super soldiers. They're just great. They're so much fun. They got really good stats. They've got really cool abilities. They can execute. They're immune to executes themselves. They can area of effect stun and do a lot of damage when they do so. Um, they run really fast. Uh, them falling on their heads is just really funny. Um, I, I don't know. They're lovely. They have such a they have kind of a unique mechanic in that they attack way faster than any of the other ants in the game it's just great the thing that's like makes them just unbelievably powerful though is they have 40 percent evasion it's so good it's basically like having 40 percent damage resistance to venom and physical attacks but it's just kind of more random like sometimes you'll get in a fight and you'll just dodge every single attack and just win without taking any damage uh, or sometimes it won't work and you won't dodge any of the attacks and you'll just get killed kind of quickly, kind of quickly. But they're just fun. They're just great. I love them so much. They're just, they're my favorite. They're so much fun. That being said, as fun as they are, their power doesn't live up to their fun for me. That being said, they are S tier. They are <laughs> so, so powerful. I, if you get a bunch of them together, they start chain stunning really well. And if you get a bunch of them attacking a creature that can be executed, it just dies immediately because one of them executes. Yeah, they're just great. They're really, really strong. Um, I don't think they're as strong as army at majors. Uh, their stats are a little lacking compared to some of the other ants we have in the game right now. Um, still phenomenal, but like for their price, they're not like... We're gonna get to them later, but like, we'll look at the leaf cutter ant majors. They're only like ten food more than, um, than the super soldiers. Their stats are quite a bit lower than the leaf cutter majors. 
like, again, they have great abilities, and that's really cool, and they're really fast, which is really fun. Um, and I think far in the future, if we are if we ever get to a point where we can combine any ants with each other into one colony, there's going to be a lot of great things we can do with them, including pairing them with army ant majors, which results in big-headed ants uh, potentially having DPSs over 200, which is ridiculous, but they can do that because their attack speed's so high. Um, so they're really cool. Power-wise, they're great. They're really, really high up there. I mean, I put them in S tier for a reason. Um, they're not going to be the highest in S tier. They're not going to even be that high in S tier. I kind of think they're a little like low S tier because I think there's a lot of ants that outshine them even though they're really, really good. I just think that their stats aren't quite up to what their food cost is. Um, and I don't think I, their abilities are just a little too inconsistent for me to kind of say like, well, yeah, I can always rely on a stun or an execute or something because I can't. It's very random. I can't even rely on their evasion to work all the time. So it's because they're so heavily RNG, sometimes they can be great and sometimes they can be terrible and their stats are good. They're just not phenomenal for their price at least. So I love them. They're probably going to be like low S tier though. Next Next are the big-headed ant majors. Um, everyone hates these guys. Um, and they don't deserve it. They're really, really good stat-wise, actually. Like, people hate them, and they say that they're terrible, and they say that, like, oh, they're, you know, they're not even as good as workers. Um, you know, why would you use them? They're not as good as little black ants. Uh, you know, they just get shredded by things. They don't have, they don't do damage, da-da-da, all this stuff. It's not really true, uh, and some of the things that are true are misleading. Um, I've been doing the math on them, and their DPS per their food cost is phenomenal. They're like top five or six ants in the game for the most DPS per their food cost. They do a lot of damage for what they cost. Like, I was, I was hyping up the army at media this whole time about how much damage they did. These do about the same amount per their food cost. Again, they are 25 food and these are 40, so, you know, the media do do more damage. They do a lot of damage. They're really quite good. Health-wise, I very recently calculated some of the health things. I'm not as far along as the health, uh, like the survivability as I am on the damage. Um, and they're not that survivable but you know whatever but like whatever they're cheap ants that you can spam a lot of them their survivability doesn't have to be that good um and they're still good like they're still high up there's a lot of other ants that are a lot lower than they are they're probably they're it, definitely in the top 10 i don't know if they're in the top five but they're definitely in the top 10 survivability wise damage wise they're definitely in the top five they're so good just as if, for instance, to compare to something that a lot of people know how strong they are, is black ants. Survivability-wise, for their price, black ants and big-headed ant majors are equal in survivability at level 1. At level 2, big-headed ant majors are way, 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 way better than black ants, and at level 3, it's the difference is even bigger than at level 2. They're so much better survivability-wise than black ants, except at level 1, in which they're equal, and then DPS-wise, it's not even a question. Black ants fall in the bottom 10 for DPS per their food cost. And the big-headed ant majors fall in the top 5. They are so good. They are amazing units. So why does everybody say that they're bad? Well, one of the things is people say, Oh, but their workers are even better than they are. So that means they're bad, right? No. Remember when I... Remember when I said that they were in the top five for the most DPS per their food cost? Their miners are in the top five as well, and they're higher than these ones. The miners are unbelievably good for their, like, their damage per their food cost. They're ridiculous. They're so high. And if you didn't know, the big-headed ant miners, their workers for this colony have completely different stats from all the other workers. They are so much stronger than all the other workers to, to, to a point where they are stronger than most of the ants in this game, at least for their price. They're just ridiculously strong. 
So, yeah, if you compare it to their workers, generally, yeah, their workers are better for their price than the majors. Because they are better DPS and uh, survivability, they're also better for their price. They're not better, period. Like, the majors have more health, but for their price, the miners are better. So, it's like, yeah, you could just make a bunch of workers and they're gonna perform better because there's, they're just kind of stronger than the majors. Which is unfortunate. If you add piercing into the mix, uh, because they do have a 20% piercing, which a lot of people are like, oh, their piercing needs to be higher. Piercing doesn't change that much in the game. There's, like, there's, like, just barely over 20% of creatures in the game have any physical resistance at all. So, having piercing doesn't matter a tremendous amount, and 20% is basically all you need. The average for piercing, or the average physical resistance in this game of creatures that have it at all is about 20%, and there's very few creatures that have more than 20%. There's very few, and the most is 50%. So, piercing doesn't change it's not that important most of the time anyway, so increasing their piercing wouldn't really help them a tremendous amount. It'd help, but not a lot. And at the rate that they're at right now, if their miners typically still do better damage for their price because they're ridiculous. They're so... I'd wager to say that the big-headed ant miners are overpowered ants because they just don't need to be as strong as they are. They just simply do not. They kind of outshine the big-headed ant majors in a lot of ways, and that's kind of sad because the majors are really, really strong. It's just that their workers are unbelievably strong. On top of this, kind of the only thing that big-headed ant miners do, majors do better than their workers for their price is food collection, and it's only once they get to level 3. Because if you didn't know, big headed ant majors uh, at level 2 and 3 collect more food than their workers do. So it's like the workers can collect 15 food from a carcass um, or like a pine cone or something like that. Um, and the, the majors at level 2 can collect 17 and at level 3 can collect 20. So they for their price, they only beat out the workers at level 3. But that's still pretty cool because at level 3 that means you're collecting 5 more food each time you harvest from a carcass. And so you can bring food back faster, which is pretty cool. And so I like that about them. Um, I personally think a lot of people are calling for buffs for them. I think Primarily I think it's because people don't realize how good they are. Um, secondarily though, and it's a really fair point, is that their miners beat them in basically every regard. Like they're just better than the majors in combat and they can do all the worker things so the only things that the majors really come out on top with is their food harvest and so i'd like it if they do get a buff i'd like it for them to buff their food harvest more than it is currently and then they become this kind of niche collection unit instead of combat which I think, which the miners just do better, and the super majors do phenomenally. So you could just let them handle that, and then you could make them gatherers, which would be really cool. We don't really have a, well, we do have a gathering unit. It's the leafcutter media, and I will talk about them, but leafcutter media aren't good gatherers. Uh, they are. They're great gatherers. They're cheap. They can gather more food than the workers, and that's just helpful. So... It would be really cool if they do get a buff, if they buffed the food harvest that they can do. Um, I would really like that if they do buff it, so devs, if you watch this and you are going to buff them, please just buff their food harvest, because I think that's a really unique um, attribute that they have, and I think it'd be cool if you capitalized on that and made them specialists to harvest more food, so... That's my vote for that. So anyway, where I'm gonna place them? I'm gonna place them in. I'm gonna place them in A tier because they're they're really good. Um, I can't deny the fact that they are very outclassed by the other ants in their colony. Like big headed ant super soldiers are really really good. Their stats are not as good for their price as their majors, uh, except in survivability. There's a little bit of overlap there but like damage wise they do way more than the super soldiers but sometimes you want to just shell out to have a big massive tank that can take a lot of damage and does a lot of damage by itself and instead of having a bunch of little ones that you have to 
um, you know, relay eggs and replace on chambers and things like that. Like, I, like, there's, there's a time and a place for each, and unfortunately, a lot of the jobs that they would do that would replace the jobs that the super soldiers would do, the miners just do better. So, I'd really like them to have more harvest in the future, but for this reason, they're still really, really good units, but they're outclassed by units in their nest, which makes it a lot harder to use them in their nest. So I'm going to place them in A. I'm going to place them probably low A, though. They're still phenomenal units. There's so many ants in this game that we're looking at right now, and they're so good. Like, they're just, like, if you gave me a free play challenge and you were like, you have to use big-headed ant majors only, I'd just be like, sure, I, I, that's great. Like, if you told me to only use black ants, I'd complain because I don't like black ants and they're a lot weaker than big-headed ant majors. If you told me to just use, like, slave makers or, you know, a bunch of other ants, I would just say, like, why? Uh, can I just, yeah, I'd really love to use the big-headed ant majors. That would actually be fun. It wouldn't be fun with a lot of these other ones and it wouldn't, it would also be less powerful. So they're really good. Placing them in low A, because I think that's where they deserve right now. Um, I, I think they're really balanced. I really don't think they need to be buffed, because I'm going to come out with a video later. I'll explain their stats more in detail, but just know for now, their food per DPS is really, really good. Like, top five ants really good. Like, phenomenally powerful. Their survivability is also good. It's not like, I don't know if it's going to be top 10, but or I don't know if it's going to be top 5, but it is definitely top 10. Really, really good units. Um, I just think they should specialize in food collection a little better than they do right now. And then I think they'd be really cool units. So, yeah. Ah, little black ants. Little black ants are phenomenal. And I think everybody knows it. I think everybody realizes how powerful little black ants are. Um, and everybody kind of knows that... When you play them, just get a lot because they're cheap, and you can upgrade them, get them up to level 3. They're so good at level 3. Um, and just have a bunch of them, and just go murder everything. Confuse anything that can be confused um, until they can't do anything. Uh, and if you can't confuse them, just rely on that 40% damage increase to that creature. It's so good. I think the one thing that brings them down is that they can't group up with any other ant species. Because if they could, you could put them with something that does a lot of damage, and then just apply this debuff, and then that ant that does a lot of damage suddenly is just even stronger. They're doing 40% extra damage. I think the day that we can merge them with other colonies, they're gonna jump up to the second best ant in the game. They have good stats, especially their DPS, uh, for their uh, price is really good. Their survivability thus far isn't great just because their health is so low and it takes them so long to trigger their gaster flag that oftentimes they just, unless it's really low damage, they just die immediately. I think that's why in swarms they're good though because if even if a bunch of them die, it gives the rest of them that are still alive time to use their gaster flag. And then once they've applied it, now they're really doing well. Um, but, like, on an individual basis, like they do struggle a bit in that regard. Um, but they're phenomenal. They're really, really good ants. Like, they're S-tier. I'm just gonna say that right now. They're definitely S-tier. But uh, how do they compare to Big Head and Ant Super Soldiers? Because it, it's very different. It's, like, a very, very cheap strong unit versus a very expensive strong unit. I just... I, I think I gotta say that they're stronger than the Big Head and Ant Super Soldiers only because... They're just great for their price, and they have really good support abilities that, uh, like, and they can kind of support themselves, and they can take down really powerful enemies just on their own merit, because they're just, the 40% debuff at level 3 is so good, um, and the confuse is amazing, like, they're just really good units in a lot of situations, especially in swarms, which they're good at because they're really cheap, so they're just... They're built to be really good units by themselves, and they're also really good support units when we're able to merge colonies with them. Um, I think I will probably remake the tier list 
I mean, I'll remake it once Tier 5 comes out for sure, but I'm probably also going to remake it if there's ever an update where we can put all of the ants into one um, group, because at that point, once we get to that point, it's going to be really good. They're going to be really, really strong. So, yeah, great units, very powerful, just phenomenal. Oh, black ants. Uh, black ants. Uh... I ranked Black Ants in low C tier last time. Because I didn't think they were very good. Now that I have done actual calculations on them and figured out how good they actually are... Oh, and that tier 4 has come out? F. Absolutely F. They're terrible units. They are, one, they are the most useless unit in this game. Without a doubt. I, you know, everyone hating on big-headed ant ma majors, just know these are worse for their price than big-headed ant majors. Like, significantly worse in basically every regard except survivability at level 1. It's the only thing that they're better at. So, uh, no, they're not even better at it. They're equal. They're just terrible. They are outmatched by basically every single ant in the game in some way because they're generalists and they're bad at being generalists like they're generalists that really deserve a buff in like every little regard like they should have a little more health or they should cost a little less or they should do a little more damage because they're just they're just bad in like every regard there's nothing about them that is really good except their regeneration speed which is the which is tied for highest in the game which that's nice but regeneration speed doesn't matter that much because their regeneration speed is still like 0.3 it's health a second which is still really slow it's still going to take them a long time to heal all the way back up um or even heal from just a little bit of damage like they just it's not that good and often in this game you don't want to just sit and wait forever you want to keep progressing and so that one benefit doesn't help them that much it's just not good so so yeah there's that stat wise they're just bad that's the first thing the second thing is the places where they are not your only decision they are a bad decision to take in general there are very very niche situations where they're okay to have I can kind of think the only really good place to have them. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that. Basically, once you hit Formicarium Challenge 3, unless you're trying to do, like, Deathless or something like that, they're not good anymore. Like, Leafcutter Majors... Either Leafcutter Major at level 1, which is 150 food, which is the same price as a level 3 Black Ant, a level 1 major is has better DPS, has better health and survivability, has either a stun or a taunt heal, um, and really the only thing that the Black Ants have going for them in that matchup is that their regeneration is faster and their hatch and their rehatching cost is lower. But if you aren't as survivable as the other ant and you don't deal as much damage, you don't have to respawn as often. So it might even out anyway. I don't know for sure, but it it might not. And that's the problem with black ants. As soon as you get to Formicarium 3, they are useless. They're just, there's no point building them because Leafcutter Majors do anything that black ants can do way better. And then if you say, like, oh, what about their Formicarium upgrades? The Formicarium upgrades for Leafcutter Majors are so much better than for Black Ants. It, if you give Black Ants the, like, attack speed increase, they still do not do as much damage as a Leafcutter Major who has no upgrades. The, and they tank way better. They're phenomenal tanks. And... And then, even, and then you could also say, like, oh, well, if you give a black ant um, defensive, um, or, like, not defensive, if you give them meat wall, 
then maybe they'll have as much health as a leafcutter ant. No, their survivability with 50% damage reduction is still not as good as either of the leafcutter ants when they're at level 3, because the, the stun is so good, it blocks so much damage, and the taunts resistance ability is just way better. It's just, and they have more health. Like, they have the black ant getting... 50% damage reduction with only like 70 health max is just not great. Leafcutter majors who have 400 health getting damage reduction abilities is fantastic because it keeps them alive for so long and they can do more with their abilities and they can do if they had 50% resistance, they could do so much with that resistance. It would go so far. Black ants they're just they're not as good as leafcutter ants. It's, there's just no point in making them. The reason I made a specification is if you're doing deathless, evidently if you give them the resistance and then you put like defensive on the leafcutter majors, um, and then you give them like some armor upgrades, they're ridiculously hard to kill. So in that case, yeah, they're good. But again, like if you put all of the jelly upgrades that you could on a black ant and then compare them to a leafcutter, the leafcutter is just better without its jelly upgrades. And then if you then if we want to talk about the jelly upgrades, defensive giving defensive giving the aura to other ants is so much better than a 50% meat wall for the one ant. And also 30% damage resistance on a leaf cutter ant is so much more useful than any kind of resistance on a black ant. Then if we want to talk further about upgrades, if you put sharp on a leaf cutter ant, it's going to do so much more damage than, like, the tiny little piddly increase that, um, whatever the damage increases of black ants. It's just so much better. It's so much better. And then we can talk about shockproof and durable and god, like, durable just gives the leafcutter ants three armor, which is great. It's so much armor. And then shockproof just not taking more than 20 damage is so powerful. It's, it's unbelievably powerful. Any of those upgrades are better than any of the upgrades that Black Ants could get. And even the even if Black Ants got those upgrades and Leaf Cutters didn't, the Leaf Cutters are still better than them in almost every regard. So Black Ants are just outmatched. And then and then if we want to talk about Formicarium 4, you get Fire Ants, and it's just like Fire Ants do more damage, they have more health, they have better survivability. If you take Vigorous, they have 25% physical damage resistance and 35% venom resistance and there's two of them per um per track which means in uh, or per tile which means in essence they have 100 health with that damage resistance without any jelly upgrades and they do more dps than black ants why take black ants there's uh, that especially formicarium 4 there's no reason to take black ants in fact if if anything Taking black ants, I think, reduces your power because you're taking up spots that could be filled by leafcutter ants or by fire ants. And then we could also talk about the wood ants, but like wood ants sit in the back and they're not, I feel like they're not as comparable to black ants, but like wood ants do way more damage than black ants. Like that's, they're there to do a lot of damage and the black ants were kind of put in in Formicarium 2 to be shields for the wood ants. And the majors do that way better. And then, and then, um, so it's just like, I, there's not really a point in having the black ants. It's just really not. I think they're F because I think in situations where you can have black ants or you could have something else that does the black ants job, the black ants are always always going to be out competed by some other ant there's always going to be another ant that you should take over the black ant there's they're just not good enough to justify like ever picking them if you have another choice if they're your only option then they're fine but the problem is what we're comparing ants to each other on this tier list and that's why black ants are f because they are terrible compared to other ants so, yeah, anyway, I've ranted long enough about them. They are garbage. That's why they are an F tier. Um, if people want to argue with me about that, wait for my math video, and I'll show you mathematically why they are worse than all the other ants, and then there's not going to be a debate about that because they're just bad. Now, okay, I should specify. I've had one argument that I think is pretty good for why black ants aren't the worst, and it's that Pharmacarium 2... 
Purple Carrion 1 and 2 are made pretty significantly harder if you're just using workers. Like, in Form Carrion 1, if you're just using workers, it's made quite a lot harder. And Form Carrion 2, if you're using workers with... Like, using workers as the tanks for the wood ants is a lot harder, for sure. Problem is, neither of those Form Carrion challenges are that hard. Like, even on Insane... It's pretty easy to do without the black ants, so... Uh, I don't know. I still am kind of like, yeah, that's a fair argument. that there's, They help a lot in those levels. They make them way easier. They're still pretty easy, even on, like, insane difficulty, if you don't have black ants. So... I, I don't know. They're just not good. They're just very outclassed by other ants. I truly think they need a buff. Like, I, I actually really think that Black Ants should be buffed because they're just... Or, or their Formicarium Jelly upgrades should be totally different. Because none of them make them stand out from the other ants that are in the Formicarium. And they're outclassed by basically every other ant in the game in basically every regard. You know, there's some, like, specialists, like, like Melee Wood Ants have abysmally low DPS... Black Ants have way bigger DPS than they do, even though they're the same price. But they're really tanky. They're way tankier than Black Ants. So if you're if if I'm going into a fight and I have like rapid fire or mortar wood ants as my damage, I'm gonna take melee wood ants because they're way better tanks than black ants. I'm going to take them because damage is covered. I don't need the mediocre damage that Black Ants bring because I've got a lot of damage coming from my ranged ants. So I'm going to take the tank. That really helps me. Formicarium Challenge is the same thing. I'm going to take the Leaf Cutter tanks over this that can't tank very well. I, I just They're just not good. There's very few instances where I'd say that there's any ant that is worse than them. I will talk about them a little bit with some of the other ants in the future here, but, like, they're just so bad. I just... They're just so bad. Anyway, rant over. Sorry that was so long. <laughs> okay. Next, we get to the fire ants. Fire ants are ridiculous. They're so strong. They're S-tier. Both of them are S-tier. They're so strong. Pervasive fire ants are weaker than vigorous, generally. I, I think if you're in free play, pervasive are probably... I don't even think they're, they're not better though. They're just like it's another option. I think in the story levels, the vigorous are just so much better that you should just take them because they're just so good. Like I think the ability of the pervasive fire ants is technically a better ability than the vigorous fire ants because the vigorous fire ants description is it gives a small buff. It's not a small buff. It's an absurdly big buff. It makes their DPS way higher than normal it gives them a 25 percent physical resistance bonus and then an additional 25 percent on top of the 10 percent venom resistance they already had so now they have got a 25 percent physical resistance 35 percent venom resistance i it, they're just the buff and also the speed buff is ridiculous they can go so fast they can accomplish so many tasks so quickly with that speed they're just great I, vigorous fire ants are are absurdly strong pervasive fire ants are really good too because fire ants are just strong in general they have fantastic attack stats their health stats are actually shockingly really good especially once you get to level three because you get two of them um it basically doubles the increase that you already get from getting to level three uh, they're just and just fire ants in general getting two ants at level three on each tile is so ridiculous it's so strong I, and the the how this game works having a big burst damage right at the beginning of a fight against like other ants especially is so strong because if just a few fire ants get stings in on an ant that ants either dead or it's going to die really fast and in ant versus ant battles if you can doing a whole bunch of burst damage and getting rid of a whole bunch of other ants decreases how much dps the enemy side has and so even if, like, you have to use all your resources right off the bat to kill a whole bunch of them and then you're weaker afterwards, usually doesn't matter because you've weakened the enemy army so much more than they've weakened you. So, they're just great. That's, they're amazing. 
Uh, also, another thing I just want to point out about black ants. Um, I was in battle arena, and if you do big groups of fighter ants versus black ants, in equal numbers, not just in equal value, like, you know, because fighter ants are 40 and black ants are 50, not equal value, equal numbers. Black ants usually still win that fight against black ants, or the fighter ants win the fight against black ants. They're cheaper, and they still beat black ants. Like, that's another reason... And I know Fire Ants are really strong, so it's maybe not a very fair comparison, but they're both in the form of Carrion. So you could have an ant that is cheaper and is stronger, even for even just by itself, than a black ant, and it's great. It, now, if it's in a 1v1, that's a different story. But if it's level three, if it's a level three black ant against two level three fire ants, which is fair because each tile of a fire ant is two level three fire ants they win that fight so still just kind of and it was cheaper to get those two and they still won that fight in a 1v1 and if you're in a group they definitely win that fight so just fire ants are just really good and black ants are not and i want i think black ants deserve a buff you could just rebalance like maybe that would be a pain because you have to rebalance the first two campaign levels but they just suck like i really what i think they should have is their formicarium jelly upgrades should be better and they should be different than what they are because the ones that are currently there are just not that useful the meat wall is great meat wall is really good it's overshadowed by the leaf cutters but i think their secondary jelly upgrade should just be something else than self-preservation and whatever the out of combat healing one is neither of those are that good so it would be nicer to change those two and just make them a lot better so they'd actually like have some relevancy in Form of carrying three and four. Vigorous fire ants, I think I you know, they're they're up oh, they're okay. They're there. They're ridiculous. They're so strong. Um I'm gonna have a little bit of a debate about what ant is the second strongest, but vigorous fire ants are going to be up there. They're just absurdly strong. They have such high DPS, the fact that you get two of them at level three is just so good. Um you know, doing venom damage is nice because there's less, there's fewer creatures in the game that have venom resistance than um, physical resistance. So that's just a bonus that you do a lot of venom damage. And then if that, if they do encounter something like that, they still do physical damage. It's not a lot, but they still do it. So they can still kind of get past that. They're not totally um, neutered. So still really good. Vigorous fire ants are amazing. Uh, pervasive, I'm going to say, are lower. I still think they're really high, though, because their ability is really good, and fire ants are really strong, so I just, I still think they're great. Um, yeah, I should also mention, the little black ants, again, once we get to a point where we can combine any ants into any form of carrium, the little black ants going to be second best, because any ants that buff their allies or debuff enemies, thereby indirectly buffing their allies are unbelievably good because there's so many ants anytime you're attacking something that if you can buff all of your allies even if it's not a lot if you can buff all of them suddenly that a little bit of increase is it's like even if you only increase some metric by like one if there's like 50 ants that metric is essentially increased by five against the one enemy they're attacking or against by 50 against the one enemy they're attacking and that's why buffing ants is so strong in this game so they're only going below the fire ants because they can't interact with other colonies right now that's the only reason they're there all right now we get into our leaf cutter majors now our leaf cutter majors last time i did this i ranked them um in high a and now that i've been doing stats on them and seeing just how absurdly good at tanking they are and just also how much damage they deal because they do a lot of damage it's not a lot for their price but just that one ant does a lot of damage they're just they're really strong they're so strong that there's some creatures in the game that are kind of like Oh, like, they're kind of middle of the road, and I'm like, oh, you know, in power-wise, and, like, they could 1v1 a major, and it'd be a relatively close fight, and that's just scary to me how powerful they are. Something I forgot to explain at the beginning, how I'm determining what these ranks are. Sorry. Um, S-tier is these ants 
are just unbelievably powerful. They are so, so powerful, and if you have the chance to choose them over another ant, you just should because they're ridiculously good. That's what S is. A is these are really, really good units, but they're not, like, they're the, the S tier units are in a different league of their own. They're just unbelievably powerful. The A are just really, really good units. B is, they're good units overall they're not anything spectacular but they're just solidly good units c is they're they could probably use a buff like they could probably use a buff just relative to something there's something about them that's just not going right for them um but they're not garbage they're just they're okay d is they're bad but they don't have zero redeeming qualities they're just not good and they really need a buff of some kind because they're not good enough in the place that they're at right now at least in my opinion other people I, I, my, this is my opinion on all of these things i should reiterate like i'm not the definitive decider of how powerful these ants are um this is just my opinions um but yeah that's that and then f is i truly believe they have zero redeeming qualities or at least the handful of redeeming qualities they have are not good enough to offset all the terrible things that they have. So that's my rankings for that. I'm going to be putting the Leafcutter Majors in S tier because they are unbelievably powerful. They're so good. I, I didn't realize how good of tanks they are until I started doing the math for them. And they're just, they're just by and far leagues and leagues and leagues ahead of every other ant. Except for one, which is very close, and we're going to be talking about it later on. But they're just so much better. Those, like, three ants are so much better than all the other ants. So, because of this, I'm going to put them in S tier. And then the age-old question of who's better, the stuns or the taunts. I made a video about Leafcutter Majors. The video was titled, Why Stuns Are Mathematically Better Than Taunts. In that video, I go through a very lengthy math process to show why stuns are just a lot better than taunts are. And then in the cases where taunts are better than stuns, they are a lot better than stuns, but those situations are like 20% of the time, and the other 80% of the time, stuns are better. So, you know, if stuns are better than taunts 80% of the time, stuns are better than taunts generally. Obviously, there are cases where one's better than the other, but that's the case with any ant. After that video, I've learned a lot about how the game works, and I realized that, like, I wasn't... I wasn't right about a lot of things in the game, um, and there were some things that I overlooked um, that I even should have known about at that time. However, there were things I couldn't have known at that point that change a lot of that math, and I'm going to be talking about it more in the math video, but there's some things that are just very different. And so that video is now a little outdated. However, I think a lot of my concepts still hold true. And a lot of things that people criticized the video about that at the time I was like, oh yeah, that's good criticism. I now look back at it and go, actually, it wasn't good criticism, but it wasn't anyone's fault that it wasn't good criticism. It was something that none of us knew about how the game worked, that now that I do know, my point is just made more valid, even though I technically was going off the wrong information initially. It's confusing, and I'll explain it more later, but essentially... Stuns are still mathematically better than taunts at blocking damage and at survivability 80% of the time. The other 20%, which is against things that cannot be stunned, the taunts are better. But that's the really the only time. Basically, at every other instance, stuns are better. And the only other thing that I want, just want to say really fast about that is that taunt majors do more damage than stuns because they taunt less often and their DPS gets reduced when they stun or taunt. Because taunts taunt less often than stun stun, taunts have a higher DPS. It's slight, it's like, you know, it's like less than one DPS at level one and two, and it's about one extra DPS at level three. So it's, it's you know, it's significant. That's still pretty good. Um, and it's something to keep in mind. If you're just going for max damage, yeah, taunts are better than stuns. And that's something I didn't talk about at all in my video that I didn't even think about. So that's something that was pointed out to me um, by Soul, uh, which was very appreciated. Thank you, Soul. I should mention a few other people who helped with figuring some of this stuff out. The argument that I gave for why Big Headed Ant 
majors are are maybe a little bit less good was given to me by Amar. Uh, thank you, Amar, for pointing that out about the within their colony they're not as good and that's why they're ranked lower. That is a fair point. So thank you for that. Um, and then just generally figuring out how these ants work, uh, Ant BZK. Uh, thank you as well. You've helped tremendously in figuring things out. Ant BZK is also the person who runs the Empires of Undergrowth wiki. So thank you for that. It's very helpful. Stuns are better than taunts. So stuns are going to go here. And taunts are going to go here. Because I think, for now, taunts are better than little black ants, and I think they're better than the super majors. Um, I think once we can combine colonies, this might shuffle up a little bit. Um, but for now, I think this is where they stand. They're both just absolutely phenomenally good at tanking and reducing damage, and they're just great. Leaf Cutter Media. Now, I put Leaf Cutter Media in D tier. Because I was like, leafcutter media have garbage stats for their price, and they don't harvest more than their workers, so... Uh, you know, I put them in D, and guess what? They're still D. They are, st in my mind, still suck quite a lot. Now that I've been doing math on this, for their price, their DPS is still really bad. Um, it becomes better when they're going up against things with physical resistance. It's still not good compared to all of the ants in the game. Critically, it beats out the majors for DPS, but only against physical... Only when they're fighting things that have physical resistance, and it's only very significant and, and like, decisively more than the majors once we get to 20% physical resistance or more. And to put that in perspective, that's like two-thirds of the creatures in the game have 20% or more. Um, the other third have 10%. Um, and then things, and then there's only like 20% of creatures, period, that have any physical resistance. So majors are still, for the vast part, better damage dealers, even for their price, than media. And then survivability-wise, it's not even a question. Media actually are pretty good survivability-wise compared to all the ants. It's, it's, it doesn't hold a candle to the majors, though. It's so much lower. So combat-wise, totally outmatched by the majors. Leaf harvesting-wise, still outmatched by their workers. Their workers just harvest food better than they do um, because they're cheaper. And the advantages that the media get don't outweigh the fact that they just don't harvest as quickly and if you have four workers you have four minims versus one media and only getting one minim and the more minims you have the faster your food production is so you can use your food faster if you use workers and you collect leaves faster so they are outclassed by the other ants in their colony um and in like every regard um, that they're specializing in. The workers being specializing in harvesting and the majors specializing in combat. They're just not even close to being as good as either of them at that point. Now, there are a few points that people have brought up, and this is a number of people. This is like, this is like Amar and Meep and Helix. Souls brought it up. Like, I think a lot of people have brought this up. On the collection side of things, Leafcutter Media are uh, subpar for collection, but the nice thing is that they're still good at collecting leaves and they can fight things off. Workers can't really fight things off. Like, four workers do not have the same combat capability as one media. That is absolutely true. So if, some, if like, a mantis comes up and starts attacking the worker line, if there's media there, the media will kill it pretty easily um and they won't suffer a lot of losses the workers however will get decimated and they won't kill it very quickly so in that regard yeah there is an advantage to using media if that's your thing i never have a problem with that because i always just have a handful of majors walking up and down the line with all of the uh workers um, and then if, and even if I don't have a few of them there and they're off going and fighting something else, I can just call them back. And like a few worker, like quite a few workers will probably die, but my food losses are going to be minimal compared to how much, how many leaves I'm bringing back and how much food I'm getting back after that. And the majors will kill it. Um, and then I didn't really have to waste food on a media. And so in my 
In the way I play the game, media are totally pointless. Other people don't play like that though, and then they're a lot more useful for other people, and in those cases that's fine, because yeah, they can fight things off pretty well, and they harvest leaves pretty well, it's just they don't fight or harvest as good as some of the other units in their um, group. And then the other thing I want to point out that Soul especially has talked to me about is um, if you are trying to beat front line on day one, you need media because army at majors have 20% physical resistance. And as I talked about earlier, that is the point at which media start dealing more damage for their price than the majors is once you get to 20% physical resistance. So you kind of need media to be able to kill enough army ants on the front line on day one to be able to win that level. So there are instances where you do need media. And that's one of those really good instances. And so because of those two reasons that I pointed out as to why they're a benefit, that's why I'm not putting them in F. Because stat-wise, they are worse than the vast majority of ants in basically every regard. Um, they don't- they have pretty good survivability. They have terrible damage for their cost. And, like, their harvesting thing is really bad for their price, especially because their workers do that better. So that's kind of why I'm placing them in D, is because I think that their role in the colony is totally outmatched, and outside of that is, like, they're totally outmatched by others of their colony, and outside of that, they're just not very good units for their price, and that's why I'm putting them in D. I'm not putting them in F though because there are uses for them and those uses are still important. So I, I think that's that's why I'm putting them in D. I think they need a harvesting buff. Like I think they need their they are in the in the campaign missions, they are touted as the harvesters. And they don't harvest that way. And in real life they're the harvesters. And they just don't interact with food as well as workers in this game, and I think that's a problem. I, I want to talk a little bit more about Big Headed Ant Majors in regard to Leafcutter Ant Media. This is how you- the Big Headed Ant Major, this is how you make a Harvester unit. The Big Headed Ant Majors are- have good stats for their price, for one, which the media do not. They are really cheap, so you can get a lot of them to harvest things. Media are not. They're very expensive, and it takes a while to get quite a few of them. There is a point at which they are better at harvesting than their workers. There is never a point at which these- at which media are better at harvesting than their workers. The workers are always better at it than the media. Even if you upgrade media and workers, workers are just always better. Game devs. You made a great harvester unit right here. Because you made the workers so powerful, it kind of negates a lot of their utility, but also I like how the workers are, so I don't want them nerfed. I just want the harvesting ability to be a little bit better with them, because right now, they're a really good harvesting unit, and it's really cool. The media I, are just not a good harvester unit. I don't, I don't think I should call on the devs to buff the media, because I think a lot of people find them just fine. I just i don't think they're very good and a lot of people who are better at the game than i am disagree with me on this and i i still have a hard time seeing their point because in practice i had a really hard time with the harvest like i i just barely could beat it on medium when i was using media when i started using just workers to harvest leaves and then getting some majors to go kill things i beat the i beat the harvest on insane easily. It was the very first level in this game I beat on Insane. And I beat it, like, years ago. Like, long before I was in the ICS, and, or at least in the ICS server, and trying to get better at the game and learning strategies from really good players. That was something I, can't, I figured out on my own and worked really well. The fact that it came up with that strategy and it works so well is just, like, it feels very telltale to me, telltale to me, that media aren't as good as people think they are and if they just did that strategy more often they would realize how much better it is to use workers and majors exclusively and just forget the media but or maybe it's just the way i play it makes it easier and so maybe people played the way that i do and then did it they'd realize that it was good i don't know i'm still a little confused why so many people still don't think it's like still disagree with me that they think media are not like they're very suboptimal in most situations. There are niche situations where they're good. Again, the 20% physical resistance thing 
And then I guess if you just don't want to move your majors around, um, then I guess. But like, I still, I still, like, I can see why people don't like that playstyle. I don't think that means it's a better playstyle, though. I think my playstyle is more effective. I haven't tested it fully, and I don't think anyone else has really tested it fully. Just based on the handful of things I've done with it, it does seem to be more effective. Again, something to debate later on, maybe in the comments. This is a good harvesting unit. This is not a good harvesting unit. And I really think that they should capitalize on this and make this a, just an even better harvesting unit. And maybe take some lessons from this unit and go, hmm, maybe we should make this unit a little better at harvesting. Because at the moment, they're worse than their workers, even though they're advertised to be better than their workers. And that's kind of a problem. So I think that maybe should be fixed in some regard. I think their harvest amount should increase. I think baseline they should harvest like 20 leaves. That I still don't think that's enough, actually. I think the workers still would be better at that point. But I'd feel a little bit better about using them if they harvested over double what workers harvest. Actually, right now they do harvest over double. And think about it. And the workers are still better. So, I don't know. I feel like they should just be better at harvesting. Like, I think reducing their combat stats like this, make it worse combative unit that harvests more, I think would be better for them. Other people disagree with me on that, and they're just like, oh, well, then you can just use workers if that's the case. And it's like, yeah, I will, and then I'll never use media. But, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say with that. Just, I think they're not good. I think they're quite suboptimal for what they do. And personally, I think they should just be way better at harvesting because that's their role in the colony and they don't do it as well as their workers, which is awkward. So, yeah. Slave maker ants. Now, I think last time I put slave maker ants in low B. And the more I've talked with people and the more I've looked at their stats, I, I, they're a C tier. Um, I didn't realize this, but at level one, they're just about the worst unit you could possibly get for their price i don't like survivability and damage i think they're just about the worst unless you're counting like standard workers and then standard workers are worse for their price but workers do a lot of other things well so I, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison they're really bad at level one and they're really expensive so if this doesn't really exist in the game but like if you were going into free play and you're like i'm just gonna do a slave maker game it sucks early game because they're really, really bad early game and they're really expensive early game. The thing is though, is once they hit level two, they become like, okay units, like still not good, but they become okay. Like if just their level two was kind of the power that they had throughout, then I would say like, I'd still say they're C tier, but like if it was just level one and level two and then they never got any better, I'd put them in F because they're then they're, they're worse than black ants. The reason why they're staying in C tier though is because at level three, they are terrifying. They are they have really good damage for their cost and their survivability is pretty good for their cost. And ignoring like for their cost, their survivability is just good. They have 120, they have 120 health at level three. That's like starting to to approach the health that majors and other tank ants have, and it's really good. So, slave makers at level three are phenomenal, and that's why they're in C, because if I just took their level one stats, they'd be F, if I just took their level two stats, they'd be C, if I just took their level three stats, they'd be A. So, they're going in C, solidly in the middle. Early game, they're really, really bad. It's just that once you get to the late game and you have them at level 3, they're really good. And they they do just fine. So, that's where I'm going to put them. Trap Jaws. Initially, I put them in high B. Because I thought they were really strong individual units. They just were overpriced. And now that I've done math on them, they're less good. They have a very unique niche where if they're fighting if they're fighting enemies that have really really low DPSs, they can essentially live forever because they have the most consistent heal of any of the ants in the game, um, and it's the fastest heal of any ants, and it's the biggest just in total healing done, even in one instance versus multiple instances. Like they heal more than anyone else, and they're 
that's great. And they have like, they have, they have on the lower end of damage stats. And I've only started calculating the healing, or the survivability, and right now they're low, but they're also at kind of, It seems like they excel at low DPSs, and then as soon as it reaches a certain threshold, they start to suck really badly because they can't get more than one heal and a life in. As soon as they can get more than one heal and a life, though, their, their survivability just skyrockets. It's so good. The problem is there's not a lot of ants that have... Well... There's not a lot of creatures, there's very few creatures that have that low of DPS for them to excel. And they don't do great damage. Like, they're just... They're just kind of okay. And I think, stat-wise, as I've been calculating it thus far, they're not great. But they have this weird niche where if they're just fighting a lot of really weak ants that don't do a lot of damage, they can kind of live forever, or they can live for, like, minutes at a time, which is absurd. I don't like doing this. But I'm gonna put them in D. I... I was thinking... Because I put them in B before. I was kind of, like, leaning towards C, but now that I'm talking about it more and more, I'm suddenly, like... But Slave Maker ants just have, like, better... They just, like... At level 1, their stats are worse, clearly, but, like... Once you get to, like, level 2 and 3, they're, like, good units. And they're not good units at level 2 and 3. And even at level 1, they're not that good. And they're really expensive, and they don't give you that much. I guess I... Uh, I, I guess by my definitions, they should be low C. Because I, I said D is, like, they're outmatched in a lot of ways but there's like one thing that makes them good and i wouldn't say it's that's the problem with them i just think that their stats aren't very good they're not outmatched by everybody else but they're not great but i think they're bad so i'm gonna put them there because they, they're bad they're not the worst though and i think that they have a place because you could get like a little group of like seven of them and then they kind of alternate when they heal and then you could probably keep them going for a really long time and so that's good actually i didn't think about that if there's i was just thinking about them in a 1v1 and they're probably not that good in a 1v1 but in a in a group of them fighting a, like another group of ants are probably really good because they can probably keep themselves alive for a really long time I, I didn't think about that. I think they're solidly okay units. They're not great, but they're not bad. So I think C is pretty appropriate for them. And I think Slave Makers are just a little more consistent. Like, you can have a big group of them, and you know what you're going to get out of them. I think Trap Jaws are a little more valuable as, like a, as a small unit that goes out and does little tasks here and there. Instead of, like, a big army that you're just fighting another big army of ants with. I don't think they're that good at that. Slave Makers, I think, are better once you get to that point because you have more. I still think both of them are kind of solidly in the middle, though. So we'll we'll go with that. I think that's good. And now we get on to the Wood Ants. Mortars. I placed Mortars as the second best unit in the game. I was wrong. That just isn't true at all. I just didn't understand game mechanics back then. And also with the coming of... Formicarium Challenge 4, mortars are so much less useful. Also, I've been doing the math on them. They are way worse than we thought they were. We thought their attack speed was one per second, was one attack per second, and that's how we were measuring DPS. And now that we know that it's not the case, and I've been going back and re-measuring a lot of the animation speeds, the mortar's animation speed is slower than one second. So they actually attack less than once a second which has brought their overall dps down a lot like i th i think they might be in the bottom five ants for single target dps obviously their strength is in like group damage but like we still thought they were good at single target dps like like if you assume that they attack once a second with the damage that they have and you assume all other ants attack at once a second with the damage they have mortars are still really high up there the problem is now that i've measured animation speeds and i realize that that's not the case mortars are a lot worse and as i've been talking to more people in the ics i started to realize that like mortars are only good in 
very specific situations, which is when there's one big army of ants going up against another big army of ants. And then mortars are good. In basically any other scenario, mortars are not good. Like, even swarms of big enemies are typically not... There's typically not just like, a lot of enemies, and they're more spread out when there's, like, a swarm of big enemies. And typically, you want to just kill one at a time. And so doing this little splash damage and a little bit of damage to each one all kind of evenly is not great. And rapids are actually going to be a lot more useful for that. So... Mortars are really only good in one specific situation, which is killing big swarms of ants that are both fighting at a front line. That's the only situation. Like, even if you're fighting another colony, if you're fighting just a few ants here and there, mortars are not good because they miss so much, and their single target damage is not very good. Also, their splash damage, just from the... I, have, I haven't been able to test exactly what their splash damage is. It's not high, though. Like, my very, very high estimate of what splash damage is at the, like, epicenter of their splash is, like, 5 damage. It's not very much. That's the highest that I think it is. I don't think it's 5. I think 5 is an overestimate. I think it's more like 3 at the epicenter and 1 on the edges. Which isn't very much. It's like, and suddenly it's like, oh, now I have a group of, like, 19 fully leveled up. And it's like, the splash damage is kind of only doing, like... 19 damage to a few ants which is still really good but it's nine it's not even 19 a second so the dps you're doing to these ants in the not the ants you're hitting directly but the splash is like 15 maybe less and it's like that's not as good as rapid fires doing like you know 18 dps single target and just killing that one unit because like i said with fire ants why they're so good is they come in and they just burst down a few enemies right off the bat kill them and then the enemy team just has a lot less dps and they just kind of like they just have surges where they just kill a whole bunch and then fight a little and then kill a whole bunch and then fight a little and kill a whole bunch and mortars kind of are the opposite where they just do a little bit of damage constantly and that's not great in this game. Like, constant low damage is not as helpful as spike damage. Because killing a creature reduces how much DPS that the enemies are doing, and that is more important than just doing a little bit of damage to all of them. So mortars, I'm gonna put in B. Because I think they're solidly good units. Their damage is just really low, especially for their price. It's re it's not as high as it should be. Even when they're splash damaging a bunch of ants, I don't think it's that good. Again, if you're fighting a group of ants in a front, they're probably S tier. But I think in most situations, most situations, I think they're probably like C. So I'm going to put them in B. Because I think they're solidly good units. I don't think they're amazing. And then to talk about Formicarium challenges. Um, Formicarium 3, they're good. Now that I'm looking back at it, though, I actually think Rapids might be fine for Formicarium 3. Because they're, they're killing individual ants. And ants that are getting flash buffed are important to kill. It's important to just get rid of them. Because if you just get rid of an ant then they're not doing, you know, they're not doing, like, 80 DPS. You've taken out 80 DPS. Instead of just doing a little bit of damage to all of them and killing them all at once, I want to get rid of each ant that's doing 80 DPS. And if I can kill a, um, if I can kill an army ant major, even better. I'm just, I'm getting rid of, I, now they're not buffing all of, the, of their allies, and in fact, their damage is starting to decrease because of the, the, the flash buff, Flash buff, every time the army ant attacks, it, it it adds a stack of charge to the flash buff. But every second, they lose, like, two damage. Every single ant affected by the flash buff loses two damage. So if you can kill an army ant, it's not only stopping the flash buff from getting more, it's reducing the flash buff. I think rapids are actually maybe better... Maybe not better. Because I, th I think this is the niche that mortars... That's, like, the perfect place for them. And I think Rapids are close to performing as well as the Mortars. And then in, like, every other situation, Rapids are way better. 
Measuring animation speeds for rapids. Rapids are still, as we, we always knew, rapids did a lot of damage for their price, and they still do measuring animations. It's not as good as we thought. It's still really good. Um, still great single target damage dealers. They're really good at hitting things. And just having ranged units is just really good because they can, they don't clog up the front with ants. And it basically means you have two lines of ants that you can do damage with, which kind of, uh, kind of doubles your damage. Not actually, but like doubles the amount of ants that can be doing damage at once, which is just great. So they're really good in that regard, which is why rapids are S tier, but I think they're worse than majors because majors are just phenomenally good. I think the rapids are really, really powerful though. I don't think they're as good as fire ants though because it's looking like fire ants just do more DPS per their cost than rapids. In fact, there seems to be a quite a, there seems to be a, it seems like the fire ants will do that better, and there might even be a few other ants that do it better than the rapids, which kind of makes me feel like it brings them down a little bit, but they're still S tier. They're still amazing. I'm starting to reconsider this B. I'm starting to think, like, maybe I should make them A, but I think I think low A, because they're still really good in those ant situations, and they're still good in a lot of other situations. Good in the same reasons that the rapids are good. You can have two lines of ants attacking. Even though they're doing less damage than the Rapids, they're still good. So I think I should bump them up to A. Um, and then also with the addition of Formicarium 4, this is just... Uh, mortars in Formicarium Challenge 4 are not good. It, the, the low single target damage that they do and the fact that they're slow and they miss a lot is just like crippling in Formicarium Challenge 4. The Rapids are so good in Formicarium Challenge 4. They're one of the best ants for it. And they're still really good in Formicarium Challenge 3. They're like slightly less good than Mortars, but they're still really good. So you should take Rapids in the Formicarium now. Like you shouldn't take Mortars because Formicarium Challenge 4 is so much harder if you don't have Rapids. Um, and Formicarium Challenge 3 is slightly harder if you don't have Mortars. So yeah, they're just great. Um, oh, and that's another thing I wanted to talk about with the Leaf Cutter Majors. Formicarium Challenge 4 is way better with Taunts. And Formicarium Challenge 3, I think, is a little... I, I think is easier with Stuns. I think it's not that much easier with Taunts. And then the Stuns don't... The Stuns actually, like, hinder what you could have been doing with Taunts in Formicarium Challenge 4. So... I probably won't do it personally because I love stuns so much. Taunts kind of annoy me a little bit, so I don't use them that often. But I think you should take taunts in Formicarium Challenge. I don't like saying it, but I think you should still think stuns are better in most situations, though. So I think that's that. I just think that Formicarium Challenge 4 is a very unique situation in which taunts are just objectively better. So you should take them. And finally, we come to our last ant, which is the Wood Ant Melee Soldier. Now, people don't like Wood Ant Melee Soldiers. They think they're really bad, because if you pit them in a 1v1 against a, a Black Ant, which is really bad, uh, they lose. Which is true. The reason why they lose, though, is because their DPS is abhorrent, but they're very tanky. It's just that DPS doesn't outweigh the fact that they can't kill the Black Ants before the Black Ants kill them. Something I just learned about today, literally today, I was working on my math video, I was calculating some things. I did, I got to the survivability portion and I got to wood ants because they're near the bottom of the list. I got to my, the wood ant melee ones today and calculated their, how long they can survive given a certain amount of damage. And when I was doing this, I was like, all the majors are probably going to do really well because that's what they're designed to do. Um, I bet, like, there's some other ants that have some high health that are going to perform well. Um, and I was thinking, like, they're going to... These wood ants are going to do really well. They have armor, they have physical... They have armor, and then they have physical resistance at level 2 and 3. And they have a lot of health, and they're only 50 food. Which, all these other majors are, like, you know, 140, 150, 170. Like... They're gonna do well, and like even like the other one I was thinking might do well tanky wise is I thought the, the I thought the trap jaws would do better than they did, and I thought the um, 
the slave makers would do really well because they have 120 health at level three. Um, so it's like these two are gonna probably perform decently, but again, slave makers are 65 food and trap dolls are 90. They're only 50. So they might perform really well. And I was so, so pleasantly surprised to discover that at level one and two, for their price, they outperform Taunt Leaf Cutters at, uh, in my first, like, statistic that I'm measuring, which is the average DPS of Soldier Ants. Which means, in general, they are better tanks than Taunt Leaf Cutters, at least in terms of how long they survive per their food cost against ants then taunt leaf cutter ants that that blew my mind i was like oh my god they are really good tanks they're really good tanks yeah their dps is abysmal but the only time you ever play them is in a wood ant colony and you're using rapids and mortars which do a, a, a an enormous amount of dps on their own you just need to hold the line for as long as possible and let them do damage and that's what they do and they do it really well so Last time I put them in C. I think I put them in high C, right above black ants. Not the case anymore. These are good units and people sleep on them. They're really solidly good units. The DPS obviously drags them down a lot, but their tankiness is absurd. Now, keep in mind, they are beating out... The, the only ant that they lost to survivability wise were stun leaf cutter majors they beat taunt leaf cutter majors not at level three because taunt leaf cutter majors get a you know the resistance ability is absurd at level three and so then they beat them out at level three but they're still really close at level three like it wasn't a curb stomp it was a little bit different um they beat out these guys who have a stun and 40 percent evasion they're beating out like these guys and these guys who are tanky and have healing and stuff like that They're beating out leafcutter media who have a lot of health and have armor. They're still beating them out by a big margin Like I was shocked at how absurd their tanking ability was It's great. They're like the second or third best tanks in the game and they're competing with leaf cutter majors which are absurdly good tanks these are great units people are sleeping on them they're b i'm not gonna put them in a because i i think these other units are better than them but they're way better than all the other units like these are just solidly really good units they perform their job perfectly they're the perfect example in this game of specializing in something and doing it really well. These are specialized tanks and they're great at it. I feel kind of silly having so many t uh, ants in S tier, but going from like S to A is such a big leap. Like all these ants are so much stronger than the ones in A. Like I don't think the difference between A to B to C to D to F is as big. The difference in S though is so big and that's why I have so many ants up here. So. Yeah, this is that. Oh, I almost forgot. The workers. we got to put workers in here. Starting off, the standard worker. I think the standard worker is the very bottom of S. Because they're great. You can do so much with workers. You can complete every single level in the game with workers. And some of them you can beat on insane. Some of them you can beat on hard. I think there's only, like, a handful of levels that you can only beat the levels on medium and that's the highest you can beat with just workers workers are great they're so much fun so and you know they're they you know they're fast which is really fun they don't do a lot of damage but that's okay they don't do they don't have great stats for their damage and their health but they're just good so because they do a lot of cool things for the nest and they're necessary so bottom of s so then next one is the um fire ant workers uh, the reason they're different is because they sting and they have a little less health, but they do a little more damage. Um, so overall, they'll usually beat um, standard workers in a 1v1. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same. Um, so they're bottom of S, but they're just above standard workers. So not much to say about them, but they're there. They're kind of fun. Big-headed ant miners. And I've talked about them already, but they have absurdly high 
damage for their price. They have pretty good survivability for their price. It's not amazing, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, and it, it's just their damage is absurd and they're workers so they do all the things that workers do it just it makes them so good they they're up here like i was debating whether or not they were the second best but now that i think about it fire ants are just absurd they're so good but also the workers are really good but i i think i'm gonna put the workers here they are uh, the big headed ant workers here because they're workers and workers are amazing and I think they're like just, I don't think they're quite as good as fire ants because fire ants are just absurd and they're, I don't think they're as good as them because they buff other ants, um, but they're really good. They're just really, really strong. So in fact, like stat wise, I think they're stat wise better than fire ants. It's just that like how in game mechanics work, I think fire ants are probably more useful in most situations so i'm gonna put big headed ant workers right here as our fourth place in s tier yeah so this is the tier ranking um yeah i i hope you uh all enjoyed watching this and listening to it uh if you have any comments about things that i got wrong or things you disagree with please let me know in the comments so go ahead and milk that subscribe button utterly smash that like button tip your cow into the comments and finally thank you all for watching and have a great Great life, everyone.